In this video, you get to see an overview of all the different annotations available in WebViewer. Let's get started. All right, so here you see our document open. It's just a regular invoice, and you can imagine that a typical workflow would be to just annotate an invoice that was generated from your data source. Um, you have all the client data in there, and maybe you will be the person who is approving the invoice. So you can do all your common workflows that you see up here in the annotation menu. You also have additional annotations such as graphical ones that I'll go over a little bit later. But let's just show you some of the standard ones like you have highlighting here if you want to highlight the name of the customer. Maybe that was a wrong name and you want to write that in the comment right here. So you can write that as one thing to fix wrong name. And of course, you can do all the other common annotations like can have free highlight if it's something graphic that you want to add, like you want to add this down here and you can do squiggly uh, underline here if it, there's a typo somewhere with the invoice number. And you already see like these colors can all be customized. So you have all the different colors, the opacity of the highlights, and you can have a number of presets up there to save those. Um, if you do want to add comments, you can also sort them by color or you can set your own custom colors here. So you can just set your custom colors. And the way this comes in handy is if you have a number of different uh, employees who want to add annotations, you can make sure that they use the colors that are allocated to them. So if there is a comment right here, you can see on the right, we have this field that sorts all the different annotations in a given PDF document. And you can sort them by color. So if I click here on sorting by color, you see they're nicely separated by different colors. So if I have a freehand highlight here up here, that would be, um, let's say in the red color, you see they're sorted by color, but you can also sort them by any kinds of other things. So if I want to search for, for example, wrong, it will show me the one that I just wrote in their wrong name and will only show those comments as well. Or you can add combinations of color, name, uh, search comments and so on. Another thing that is really cool to do in the comment section is to have annotation statuses and mentions. So let's say I'm the person who is approving the invoice and I just put the comment in here and I, maybe I say, Mary is the wrong name. Um, I'll write in there, my coworker should say, wrong name change to Maria. And then if this person is in the system where you deploy WebViewer, that person will actually be tagged. You can say that they get an email or notification. So in this case, Andrew will get a notification. He should change the name. Um, and what he can do there when he sees the document open is that he can actually change the status of the annotation. So let's say Andre made a change to change Mary to Maria. He can change it to complete it. And then this annotation has been completed. And even though it's still there, you know, it's a completed comment, like what you would expect, for example, uh, working on Google Docs or Microsoft Word collaboration. And let's just say I want to um, complete a number of those comments all at once. What you can do is here in the multi-select button, you can just select all of those comments um, and just say down here in the status, these are all completed. And then you can actually sort it as well in this way. So if you click on the filter here, you can sort it by, again, all the different types that I mentioned before, but you can also sort them by status. And if you say sort by uh, completed status, you can see all the different tasks that have been completed will show up. All right, now moving on to the uh, e-signature. So e-signatures, first of all, they are different from digital signatures, just a friendly reminder. They are part of the annotation layer of PDFs. So really what they are are annotations as a layer just on top of PDFs. And even though they are um, legally binding in some jurisdictions, they are not verifiable. So you cannot see when they were exactly applied or whether they were applied before other changes on the document were made. And I'll just demonstrate here how we can use that as part of the annotation layer. So you just go to insert and you go to signature and you can just draw your own signature here. You can also type it. Uh, you can upload your own image for signatures that you have maybe photographed from your, from your own little post-it notes. Um, you'll draw the uh, initials here. You have different text styles available. Uh, if you if you do type the signature, you would have different text styles um, and different colors, of course. So I will just create this signature in red and I can place it here as a form of approval. So if it's part of an approval workflow and you want someone to put their signature on it, they can do that as part of the workflow and then it will show up um, as part of the annotation uh, workflow on the right. So I'll just 
undo my completed thing here and I'll see down here is my annotation, um, which is the E signature. So next I would like to show you the uh, graphic annotations. So currently we have all kinds of drawings, uh, comments and highlighting text and underlining text. But of course, it, part of the PDF spec is also to add shapes and other graphic annotations. So you have lines, you have arrows. And just one cool thing to show is that you can customize the way that those annotations look. So right now this arrow looks quite big and green, uh, but I can completely customize it if I want to make it look different. So if I just go down here to the style, uh, you can change the opacity, you can change the color. Uh, right now the uh, stroke level is really big, so I'll just make it a little bit smaller. I'll change the line type to a field type and the arrow should happen in a way that it starts with a line like this and maybe should end with a circle. And then I can increase the opacity to make it purely red. And then you can use those graphic annotations to just uh, highlight any part of your document. You can you can turn them around here. Um, you can make them bigger, smaller. So I'll just turn it around like this for no apparent reason. Make it a bit shorter and make it look like this. And maybe there's a part of your workflow where you want to have these kind of custom annotations and you can just save them up here uh, and make them part of the workflow for any set of users. And just to show you, we also have polygon tools, just a set of lines that will keep extending until you're done or the cloud selection tool to create cloud annotations. In addition to that, you will also have stamps. So if you want to add stamps in addition to images or the, these kind of call out fields to drag attention, um, you can also do that. So the stamp functionality comes with a number of preset stamps, such as approved uh, sign here, witness and so on. Uh, also check boxes is really handy if you have mobile applications or you just want to quickly approve certain things in, in graphical documents like drawings. What you can also do is insert custom stamps. So if the stamps do not uh, suit you and you want to have something custom, you can do that completely. You can just set a custom stamp here. You change the text to a custom stamp demo. Um, you can change the dynamic aspect of it if you want to have different types for the name and the date. Um, it, you know, maybe you don't need a date, maybe you just need the time, maybe you need only the username. And you can do that changing the color, the text color and so on. And then quickly just create that custom stamp and you'll be able to just insert that as part of your workflow. Now as the last part of this video, I would like to talk a little bit about our XFDF import and export functionality. So a PDF document is really composed of the underlying PDF and you see here the table, the text, invoice and so on. Sometimes the image is on it. And then on top of that, you have the XFDF, the XML based forms data format. And that's really the annotation layer. So those are all the colorful annotations I added here. And the reason why that's so important, especially to companies who want to have control over their underlying PDFs, is that you can really just take the PDF document, have one single source of truth, and take that annotation layer on top of that document to have users collaborate on it. Instead of, for example, downloading the document a million times, adding annotations, uploading it again, and then you have many different documents. So now what we can do here in Web Viewer is really that you can take all those annotations and you can export it to XFDF. What will happen is that this little code snippet here will update. Right now this has no annotations in it, so I'll click export. And now it updated all the annotations that I added here into the code snippet. Um, for example, it shows me that I, I use this style and like I had these comments made. And what I can do is I can actually copy all this. So I'll just copy paste it and I'll open a new showcase demo. So I'll just paste it here. Now it's pasted and I'll click import. And now my annotations are here. It is one single source of truth in the background. And you can use this in order to just update the annotation layer for users who want to add their own annotations, who want to collaborate and review and approve documents without actually changing the underlying document. And you can use this in order to have a consistent underlying document and then save the annotation layer. This can be done either with a save button or you can uh, also have autosave functionality to have it saved regularly so that users are always updated on what their colleagues have been working on in a review and approval process. That's everything for annotations. There are many more details to show. There are separate videos about other types of annotations, but this is it by and large. Please let me know in the comments if there's any questions about it and there will be all relevant links to the documentation below. Thanks for watching and see you next time.